Have you ever heard the saying, knowing is half the battle? Well, in League, that's definitely true. Knowing the meta and picking what's good, as well as avoiding what's bad, is a super important part of the game. With over 160 champions on League's roster, it can be tough to know what's what on your own, but don't worry, I've got your back. Today, I'll be giving you our new updated tier list for patch 13.4. This is a loose ranking of what picks are the strongest for carrying in solo queue right now. We'll also be highlighting a champion or two in each role. For the stronger picks, we'll go over what makes them good and also what their hardest matchup is. That way, you know what to ban when you want to play it or what to pick when you're against it. We'll be starting things out with our top lane tier list. Up here, the first champion we'll be covering is Darius. I can't remember a time where Darius wasn't at least good if not straight up broken in solo queue. His suppressive kit makes him super volatile. Getting a single kill usually means that the lane is over for whoever he's up against as he uses Ghost and Flash on cooldown to force kill after kill. Even the super beefy tanks and juggernauts that are so popular right now aren't safe against him. In fact, those are his favorite targets. Darius loves a slower, drawn out fight where he can fully stack up his passive for a massive dunk. Now, all of that said, there is one awful matchup that Darius should never win. Wukong absolutely destroys you. His passive is just as suited to fighting extended trades, and he has not one but two dashes to either dodge out or in to avoid your empowered Q. Even post 6, he wins 1v1, and he's also a super strong scaling pick, so it's not like you can just wait for him to fall off. Trust me when I say, you have to ban out Wukong if you want to be able to play the game. The second top laner we'll be covering is Riven. The buffs she's getting this patch aren't necessarily the type that suddenly make her a blind pickable S tier monster. In fact, only players that are already pretty good at her are really going to benefit, so we're just shifting her up to the B plus tier. With her passive now scaling linearly, the most obvious effect is stronger trading between levels 2 and 5, allowing an aggressive Riven to more consistently bag a kill in an early all-in. But the more important part of her buffs is her passive now working against turrets. Even if it's only 50% effective, being able to push early leads but taking plates in lane and being able to take turrets more quickly later on as a split pusher does a lot for getting yourself more gold to carry games. All that extra gold is needed since Riven is a super hard scaling champion with some of the best team fighting out of any bruiser in the game. But one champion that makes it really hard to ever reach that point is Renekton. It's really hard to find good trades against him. He's just too beefy for you to try to go for an all-in at any point. But you also won't find much success against him in short trades due to his sustain. He's also a super snowbally champion, so if he gets even a small lead, you'll find it almost impossible to come back against him on your own. Now, let's take a look at our jungler tier list. The first pick we have here is Jarvan. With so many other top picks getting nerfed over the past few patches, the jungle meta shifting, and Jarvan himself getting some very nice buffs last patch, he shot up to being one of, if not the best, jungle pick in the game. And the tiny nerf he's getting this patch won't really change that. His early ganks are super strong, and his team fighting is god tier. After months or even years of being borderline unviable, there's really no downside to Jarvan anymore unless you end up against Wukong. This matchup is really hard to play since you just can't really do much against him post 6. He wins 1v1s and skirmishes and you can't really stop him since he can get out of your ultimate with either his W or E. The other jungler we definitely want to talk about is Viego. With his passive now being able to benefit from crit, Viego has a lot more carry potential when you go the Kraken Slayer build on him. This build is squishier so it is a bit riskier but that's definitely a worthwhile trade off for so much more 1v9 power. Another big plus to him is that Viego has a really nice clear speed so you don't have to worry about losing out to junglers that just afk clear camps if you can't get fed early. The one ban you'll absolutely want to go for when playing Viego is Elise. Her insanely strong early game is impossible for you to deal with. Whether it's shutting down your laners or invading you and killing you, she makes it really hard to get a chance to even play the game. Next up, we've got our mid lane tier list. Here, the first big pick we need to highlight is Tristana. The meta has literally never been better for her in this role. Right now, roaming has a lot of power, and Tristana gets priority like no one else. Her E's passive allows you to perma-shove waves so you always have first move. 
If your opponent tries to step up to stop you, they're probably inting. That's because Tristana has insane kill potential, with the ability to 100-0 most enemies as early as level 2. On top of this early game power, she's also a super scaling carry, so you're also your own late game insurance. Pretty much every lane is winnable for Triss, but the one that has the most potential to go wrong is Rumble. He can mitigate some of your bursts with W and trades back super heavily if you're jumping on him. Post 6, he can usually one-shot you before you one-shot him, so you'll probably just want to ban him to be safe. The other big pick we definitely have to talk about is Aurelian's soul. His rework has definitely done the job of breathing life back into him. It's hard to believe that just a few weeks ago, he was one of the rarest champions in the game. Now, he's one of the most picked and banned, and for good reason. He's a bit slow to start, but once you get going, he's a crazy strong carry. With his infinitely stacking passive, he's the best scaling champion in the game. But you don't just have to AFK until that point, he's still pretty good at roaming. Once you get to the later parts of the laning phase, you can make some pretty good ganks happen. The must ban champion when picking Aesol is Tristana. Like I said a minute ago, Trist is an insanely lane dominant champion. She'll shove you in constantly and kill you if you ever try to contest her. She also makes it pretty impossible to leave lane. If you try to follow her and roam, she can just turn and kill you. If you're looking for a roam yourself, she punishes hard with her plate taking abilities. She can also assassinate you at any point outside of the laning phase, so trust me, avoid this matchup 100% and just ban her. Let's move things down to the bottom lane, starting with our carry tier list. Here, we'll be highlighting a single pick, Zaya, who will be moving up to the OP tier. She's a super safe blind pick with almost no unplayable matchups. Even against lane bullies like Draven, Kate, or Samira, you can at least farm safely. Due to her nature, Zaya is fine being a weak side AD carry, but if you do have a jungler playing around you, she's also pretty snowbally, making her well suited to strong siding as well. When playing Zaya, the ban you'll want to go for is Varus. Remember when I said she had almost no unplayable matchups? Well, Varus is that pick that makes it an almost. Zaya is able to deal with other lane bullies because she punishes them hard with her QE combo when they run at her. But Varus doesn't have to run at you. He can poke with his Q from across the screen, and if he's running Comet and building Lethality, he'll start shoving you out of lane very easily. His ultimate is also on a much shorter cooldown than yours. He'll use his first one to force your ultimate, then get his backup much quicker, and force another fight when you won't have your get out of jail free card. And finally, we've got our support tier list. The only pick we'll be going over down here is Annie. It goes without saying that she is absolutely in our OP tier. Her 13.3 buffs left her not just doing good, but maybe just the best champion in League right now. Her numbers seem super high, even after that hotfix, and there don't seem to be any plans to hit her with another round of nerfs anytime soon. She has high ranged autos for good poke and bursty combos, giving you great trades during laning phase. Post 6, her ultimate is insane for either forcing kills 2v2 in lane or carrying teamfights for early dragons. Even as a support, in the earlier stages of the game, she still contributes a lot of damage. Later on, that damage will fall off a bit, but you still offer a ton of utility with your shield and engaging with your ultimate. Annie is truly playable in every lane, but remember, bot lane is a 2v2 lane. If you do end up with a weak early game carry and the enemy AD is pretty strong, the lane could still be tough. And in this case, the hardest support matchup would be Leona. Her E outranges your autos, so if you're in range to poke, she's in range to start a fight. And post 6, she can look to engage from super far away with you not being able to do much to stop it. Out of all the tanky supports, Leona has the best consistent damage mitigation, so it's not like it's easy to just blow her up when she goes in. Just be safe and ban her out to save yourself in case you end up being AD carry diffed. And that wraps things up for our 13.4 tier list. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. Until next time, good luck out there on the rift.